Hello, I'm Dr. Rudy Merck. I'm the CEO of Valencia International. And uh, today I'm going to talk about some issues that uh, are maybe a little unusual, but uh, I, th I think very important. I'm going to talk about antioxidants, both fat soluble and water soluble antioxidants. I'm also going to talk about the consumption of alcohol what's good about it, what's bad about it, and what uh, the proper moderation should be. First of all, Let's talk about antioxidants. The carotenoids, astaxanthin, zeaxanthin, lutein, beta carotene. Now, what are they? They're fat soluble. They go into fatty tissue. They go into cell walls. They go into the walls of your veins. They go into fats. They go into your lymph system. And they protect those areas. Uh, they also go into your liver. They protect those areas against the ravages of singlet oxygen and oxidation. And can you? get to the point where you're taking too many of those? Absolutely. If you take too many carotenoids, since the turnover of carotenoids in your body is very slow, they can bioaccumulate in your skin, in your liver, and in other organs, and you don't want that to be a huge bioaccumulation. So with carotenoids, you want to take a moderate amount. I would say not more than 50 to 70 milligrams a day of total carotenoids, and the one that I would take the least of is beta carotene. It's available in most of the food you eat. Supplementing with beta carotene in the United States and in Western and European countries is probably not indicated because of the fact that we have a lot of carrots and greens in our diet. The other antioxidants that are important for your life and to help you live a longer life without the ravages of oxidation because the ravages of oxidation result in aging and wrinkling of your skin, aging of your organs, aging of your brain. Now, what are they? Well, they are things like vitamin C, phycocyanin contained in spirulina. These are water soluble and those, more so than the fat soluble carotenoids and antioxidants in the fat soluble world, need to be replenished every day. They must be replenished every day because your body's about 70 to 80% water and you excrete water and urine and, and waste products from your body every day. And these vitamins, these water-soluble antioxidants and vitamins are excreted. The other ones you need to get every day are the uh, polyphenolic compounds and the uh, antioxidants contained in things like berries, the dark berries, blueberries, bilberries, blackberries, strawberries, raspberries, but not from apples, oranges, and that, and, and that kind of fruit. Because in my opinion, and many people agree with me, it's okay to drink orange juice, but drink it in moderation because there's way too much sugar in it for the amount of vitamin C you're getting and from the amount of antioxidants that you're getting. So I, for instance, personally, I eat a half a cup of blueberries every day. I take raspberries and blackberries every single day. I eat strawberries every day, but I don't eat apples, I don't eat oranges. And when I do eat oranges, I do enjoy oranges. Uh, I know I'm getting a big slug of sugar, so I, I do that in moderation. Get your fat-soluble uh, antioxidants, turn over in your body slow, there's some bioaccumulation, it goes in your skin. If you eat too many of them, you're gonna turn orange, your palms are gonna turn orange. Uh, that's not a good idea. There's no health benefit for taking massive dosages. So I recommend for those astaxanthin 2 to 4 milligrams, zeaxanthin 1 milligram, uh, lutein 10 milligrams, lycopene 10 milligrams. On the uh, vitamin C side, you really can't overdose on vitamin C. It is acidic. So I recommend taking an RDI or a couple RDIs a day preferably in a time release form. And there's several companies that offer that. My company does not offer it, but you, you gotta take it. My company does sell spirulina. Spirulina, take two to six tablets a day. Now let's talk about alcohol. Alcohol is an antioxidant. It gets oxidized, so therefore by definition is an antioxidant. But I wouldn't put it in the category of a vitamin. We'll talk about a little more about that later. Alcohol is a water-soluble antioxidant, it does not go into fatty tissue. When you drink alcohol, it goes throughout your body. It does 
uh, have health, health benefits. What I recommend is one to two drinks a day, max. Three is too many, and any more than three is crazy. It's too much, okay? And how should you drink the alcohol? Well, I'm a German-American, and I love beer. But uh, as I'm getting older, I drink less and less beer. I enjoy the taste of beer. It is enjoyable for me. So uh, I drink a lot less beer. I drink mostly vodka mixed with mineral water and ice. And why is that? Because you don't want to take a shot of alcohol, number one. You don't want to drink an alcohol that's dark, and I'll go into that in a minute, because dark alcohols contain a lot of fusel oils, a lot of higher alcohols, a lot of impurities that come from the barrels or from the smoking process. And you want to drink a lot of water with it so that it's not concentrated, cannot cause local irritations. So I drink vodka or grain alcohol. I drink one to two drinks a day. I drink it with food, and I don't drink a lot of it. I don't have those two drinks right away. I spread it out over a couple of hours. I, I mitigate the amount of beer I drink. I drink beer only for pleasure. I don't drink beer for consumption. Again, even with my ethnic background, being a German American, that's very difficult to do. And and, and please moderate your, your income, uh, your intake of alcohol. Now, the, the alcohol that I would not recommend drinking is rum. Rum, if, if a chemist runs a gas chromatograph or a high pressure liquid chromatograph on rum, there's like 180 different compounds in there that are not alcohol. They are things like sugars, they are things like fusel alcohols, isoamyl alcohol. Look it up. And all these things is what gives you a hangover. These are things your body has a hard time dealing with. Uh, the other one that uh, has a lot of uh, impurities in it, and I call them impurities, are scotch, uh, Kentucky type of whiskey, bourbon whiskey, and tequila, especially the dark tequila. If you look at a drink and you see that it's dark and it has a strong flavor, chances are it has a lot of impurities in it. It has a lot of higher, what we, we chemists call higher alcohols. That means more than ethanol has two carbons, three carbons, four carbons, isobutyl alcohol, isoamyl alcohol. These things your body has a hard time dealing with, has a hard time respiring, and therefore it leads to headaches, hangovers, and things like that. Bad for your health. The other subject I want to talk about is the consumption of wine. And wine is a form of alcohol. Wine has about 10 to up to 15% alcohol. Beer has uh, anywhere from 3 to 6% alcohol. Some Belgian beers have up to 11% alcohol. But what, what is Dr. Merck's uh, recommendation on wine? Well, first of all, all wines are usually preserved with sulfur dioxide. And some people are going to be sensitive to sulfur dioxide, in fact, even have allergies to it. So you have to be very careful. If you drink wine and you get headaches or you're not feeling well, et cetera, don't drink wine. Drink vodka with ice and, and, and club soda. Now, what kind of wine has more sulfur than others? Generally, the red wines, they use less sulfur dioxide. Uh, red wines also have resveratrol in them, which uh, some people claim uh, helps with the French paradox where French people can drink wine, eat a lot of beef, uh, and not get as many heart attacks as, uh, as we do. But Resveratrol is not really what's causing the health benefits of wine because the levels in wine are very low and, uh, the, the pro and resveratrol is also very unstable. It's the alcohol that's giving you the health benefit, but you only want to drink two, uh, maximum three glasses a day over time. Now, one other thing is, is that generally you want to make sure that uh, you tend towards red wine. Red wine is probably healthier than white wine. White wine, uh, I'm a German-American, and I'm used to drinking white wine with, and you'll maybe cringe at this, but I put mineral water, Perrier, or something in my white wine. I dilute the alcohol. Diluted alcohol is absorbed slower. Your body can deal with it. And remember, alcohol causes dehydration. And dehydration is not a good thing in your body. But mixing water or soda with it is a great benefit. Now, one other word of caution about wine, there are a lot of wines out there that are very sweet, that have a lot of sugar in them. And w one thing that does is it uh, helps you absorb the alcohol faster. Alcohol is absorbed in your, in your stomach. 
if, uh, if you have uh, GERD or you have acid reflux, uh, wine is not a great thing to have in your stomach because it's fairly acidic. Wine is acidic. It's got a lot of sugar in it. Alcohol is absorbed in your stomach. It can cause inflammation and irritation. You're better off uh, drinking something that does not have the acidic component. Again, that's why I recommended uh, uh, vodka and soda. Uh, one other thing is, is that white wines tend to be more acidic than red wines. Keep that in mind and really keep your consumption of wine at a reasonable level, maximum two glasses a day or three glasses a day over time is the best health tip I can give you. Reviewing, take your fat-soluble antioxidants, take your water-soluble antioxidants. Alcohol is good for you in moderation, one to two drinks a day. When you drink it, you can either have it with ice or without ice, but I recommend drinking it with lots of water or in my case, I drink Perrier or a mineral water of some sort. Uh, Pellegrino is the one I, I, I like. It's got a lot of calcium in it. And, 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 and please do that in moderation. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.